Good evening, everybody. Welcome back for another edition of What's in the Box. This evening, we're going to be looking at something a little different for me. I have not uh, done one of these um, uh, kits yet. And uh, what we're going to be looking at tonight is the Great Wall Hobby, uh, parent company Lion Roar, for those of you who know that make the accessories. Wonderful photo etch, turn metal barrels, uh, and other accessories for ship models, etc. Aircraft models as well. They have a really extensive line of accessories. I think that's how they got their start. But we're going to be looking at the German 3.7 centimeter FLAC 43 or FLAC 43 with Sonderanghunde uh, 58, uh, which is which is weird they would do that because Sonderanghunde means special trailer. <laughs> so it's special trailer 58 trailer. Um, I don't know. Anyways, you know who. We're, we're dealing with three languages here, so uh, I can understand the confusion. So, uh, a few things uh, interesting about this weapon, weapon system. Uh, the history of the Flight 43 actually involves about four weapon systems, uh, four primary weapon systems. Uh, it was originally the Flight 18. Um, by the way, all of these guns that I'm about to talk about all fired the same 3.7 centimeter uh, ammunition, available in a high explosive round with timed fuse for anti-aircraft. Um, explosive round with impact fuse and an armor piercing shell as well and I believe they had a smoke round if I'm not mistaken I was looking at uh, Ian Hogue's book about uh, German artillery of World War II. So the Flak 18 was originally developed by the Rheinmetall Corporation in 1935 and uh, it uh, was a pretty effective weapon it was, uh, it was very heavy uh, surprisingly heavy for a weapon so small, but it did have a surprising range. Of course, it was originally developed as an anti-aircraft weapon, so it had a, uh, a maximum ceiling range of 4,200 meters, which is about 13,779 feet. So, uh, medium or you know medium altitude aircraft were flying or flying at that altitude would of course be susceptible. Of course, that the gun is not heavy enough to reach the high altitude bombers. So. The gun could penetrate um, roughly 60 millimeters of sloped armor, firing the armor piercing shell at 100 meters, and about 24 millimeters of armor at 800 meters, which is surprising. So, soft skin vehicles, armor personnel carriers, and a lot of light tanks employed by uh, the Allies, both in uh, Russia, Great Britain, and the U.S., uh, would have been susceptible to this weapon as a, a, ground, a ground weapon. Now this um, this gun was in the Flak 18 variant was extremely heavy. It uh, weighed 3,860 pounds, so it weighed over a ton. That's amazing considering it was a small caliber weapon. Uh, the next generation of this uh, weapon system was the Flak 36/37, and um, one of the things that I forgot to mention is the uh, Flak 18, which is the original version of this gun, had a cyclic rate or a fire uh, rate of about 80, effective round, about 80 rounds per minute. It fired from a uh, five round uh, internal box, well, it wasn't internal, but a five round detachable box magazine. Uh, that, and the rounds had, of course, had to be loaded into the magazines. The, they were not stored that way uh, in the transport case. The uh, FLAC 36 and 37 improvement on the F original FLAC 18 was basically a way to simplify production, uh, decrease the weight a bunch, uh, which they were successful in doing. Uh, it reduced the weight uh, on the gun um, to uh, about um, 3,200 pounds, so they shaved uh, off uh, 600 pounds. Um, and they increased the uh, cyclic rate or the automatic firing rate of this gun up to about 120 revolutions per minute. So it was a 40 round per minute, a pretty substantial improvement in rate of fire, which I can, I'm sure you can imagine in an anti-aircraft gun is extremely important because the higher rate of fire is going to increase your hit probability. Now this gun, uh, the one in the model kit, um, the Flak 43, was the last incarnation of this weapon system. Once again, still firing the same ammunition, but they reduced the weight even further, all the way down to 2,760 pounds, uh, which is a huge drop, uh, an additional huge drop. Uh, so another 500 pounds. Uh, a simplified uh, construction, reducing the amount of parts in the weapon system. They also employed a gas-operated breech system, and the trapped gas uh, mechanism allowed the cyclic rate or cyclic rate increase to up to 150 rounds per minute effective. That's about how fast they could keep it up while they exchanged the magazines. Uh, and of course this gun was employed uh, heavily 
in the, the ground attack role as well as the anti-aircraft role. Uh, many a P-47 pilot and a P-38, you know, Yabo pilot uh, were downed um, with this weapon system. Even though the, the 43, the Flak 43 variant, did not enter into production until 1944, they still managed to build 7,216 of these. I think that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, of course, that's a country tooled up for war. But that's enough background, enough history. I hope I didn't spend too much time on that or bore you. Let's take a look at what's inside the box. I would like to say, though, at the beginning, there are um, some nice, um, you know, line drawings, monograph type drawings with some, you know, attractive box art on the front. Uh, more on the side here, and then there's some nice CAD drawings here in the side showing the photo etch parts and where they uh, are assembled. Looks like it has a really nice looking photo etch uh, empty cartridge bin, which is uh, which is going to be kind of cool. So let's take a look on the inside what we have. Now this kit, um, I may have mentioned this, I'm not sure if I did or not, this kit was donated to me by uh, a, uh, one of my subscribers, and I'm very much uh, appreciative of that. He's a really great guy, but he asked to, be, uh, to remain anonymous, and therefore I will respect that. So we have the instruction sheet here in the booklet uh, format, stapled on the ends, I like that, with a nice CAD rendered drawing uh, of the box art on the front and a really nice looking sprue map. You guys can see that. So. The uh, construction of the gun uh, was step one, where boom, they go right into the, uh, in the construction of the, the breech mechanism and the barrel um, and the, uh, the whole firing mechanism. There's the mount here on the bottom. There are a total of six, seven steps, including the Zondar Anhanga, or, to the, or the trailer trailer. <laughs> um, so really uh, looks not to be a crazy build. There's some ammunition they supplied with it. Of course, I'm sure that's going to be in polystyrene format. But uh, the instructions are, uh, they're large illustrations. Uh, they're easy to follow. They don't look busy. I mean, guys, uh, Dragon, please, are you paying attention? These instructions blow yours away. Uh, your instructions, well, they suck. Uh, just saying. Make great kits, horrible instructions. So. Let's uh, a quick look at the instruction sheet. Now let's get into the sprues. Now like the other Great Wall Hobby products, it's this uh, crinkly, heavy plastic. I like this. I think it's more durable than uh, what you're gonna see typically in um, you know, most manufacturer's bags. I think this type of plastic not only protects the sprues, but uh, it also protects against abrasions. A lot of the Hasegawa kits, because Hasegawa sticks everything, all the sprues into one bag, they rub up against each other in, in transport and shipping and they get damaged. So what we have here is ammunition and it looks like there's more than one type. These are in um, eight round groups. Some of them are five and six round groups. And there's a beautifully looking slide molded gun barrel. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see some of this detail. I want you to take a particular look, and I need something to, uh, get this background here. Take a particular look at um, this gun barrel. It's got a hollowed out end. You guys can see that. Of course, there's the photo etch uh, kind of in the way, but the gun barrel even has the detail on the muzzle brake. It's one piece, not two halves, and it's really nicely detailed. You guys can see that. Look at the bolt and rivet detail on the gun shield. All very well done. There's the ammunition that I mentioned. You guys can take a look at that. They did a great job on it. So, that's sprue. Mostly the upper parts um, of the gun. And look at these beautiful wheels and tires. Yes, take a look at this. Look, take a look at the detail. You, one thing you cannot fault Lion Roar slash Great Wall Hobby is this is a beautiful looking kit with amazing detail. Uh, there are ejection pin marks, but they're all pretty much not going to be anywhere you're going to see them, and I don't perceive that as a problem. But uh, you guys can see that for yourself. The level of detail is fantastic. So that's the wheel uh, and the tire sprue. The next sprue, this is the Zonder Anhanger uh, sprue. And 
I think, let me back out for you a little bit. Let that kind of speak for itself. You guys can see the, the detail. Look at the leaf springs here. Those are nice with the fenders for the trailer, for the trailer trailer. <laughs> uh, once again, perfectly crisp rendered uh, polystyrene plastic, beautifully detailed. Uh, no complaints here. Great looking uh, sprue. So this next sprue, here's the fun part, at least it would be for me. These are the majority of the firing mechanism for the gun. The breech assembly. You guys can see these parts. Look at the detail on these parts here, and I'm going to zoom in for you. Look at that. Seriously, that's a really good looking set of plastic. The detail on all these parts is first rate. So, no complaints there. And that includes the base or the mount for the weapon as well. And these are the little, um, as Hamilker would say, filigree parts. Michael, I think we would just say fiddly, by the way. Filigree is a really cool word. I like that you use that. <laughs> but we would just say fiddly, I think. Um, look at these parts. Seats for the gunner. Probably loader, an assistant loader. Siding equipment. Look at the detail on the siding equipment. Gun sights. That's pretty impressive. There's the uh, filigree parts. <laughs> there you go, Michael. Filigree. Um, and then check out the detail here. Also superbly done. Now that is the the that it, that's it. Of course, to the kit. There aren't any more sprues. So there are uh, one, two, three, four, five sprues. You guys saw that there is a, a very simple photo etch fret that's mostly the uh, empty cartridge bin for the gun. It's got a nice set of instructions. Uh, this kind um, fellow that sent me this kit and a donation also sent me this wonderful detailed uh, Lion Roar turned brass barrel for this uh, gun with a hollowed out muzzle detail. It's uh, just beautiful. And uh, I'm going to let you guys take a closer look at this. My camera will cooperate and focus. You guys can see the, the detail on that. Turn brass. Check out the hollowed out muzzle, excuse me. A hollowed out muzzle and a muzzle brake actually has holes in it, if you guys can make that out or not. They did a beautiful job in that. So that's going to be a nice accessory to that kit. In fact, I'm going to put it in the box so that I don't lose it and it's always with the kit. Well, guys, that's pretty much it for this. Um, it was a little shorter review. Well, I guess not. It's 13 minutes since it wasn't as complicated a kit. But nonetheless, it's a beautiful kit. Guys, if you have not looked at the Great Wall products, you should. <laughs> They're great. Uh, they really are. Have you seen the level of detail, uh, the quality that goes into this kit, the thought uh, of the engineering and the build? Ever. All the reviews I've read of pretty much any of their kits. Uh, have been great. Aaron Newlands did a uh, review of the Hawk Wolf 189 with, with skis. It's a neat looking kit. If you hadn't seen his review, you should check it out. I will paste a link in the description to his review so you can. But uh, thanks for joining me this, uh, this evening, guys, and I hope everyone has a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.